Music videos are unappreciated, but not in a way that they're not popular. Looking down the list of the top 100 videos on YouTube, it's easy to see that YouTube has become the new platform for music videos since MTV moved towards reality TV. Services like Napster started a drop in ratings for MTV in the early 2000s, and it seemed for a while that music videos would just become a faded memory. People started uploading older music videos onto YouTube, and since Vivo was founded to help upload and distribute music videos onto the platform, it seems that music videos over the last decade has had a renaissance of sorts. I absolutely love music videos. I wrote my whole dissertation on them. But looking on YouTube and talking to others, it seems that not everyone shares the same enthusiasm as I do for music videos. Maybe it's because it's more aligned with musicians, but even then, some musicians don't even like their own music videos. It's funny, I'd kind of grown, I'd, I'd, I'd grown out of the video experience quite quickly. By the third one, it was just like, this is a load of bollocks. Music videos, however, are a great way to advertise musicians and folk filmmakers to flex their creativity. David Fincher, Spike Jonze, Michael Scorsese have worked with the likes of Michael Jackson, Fatboy Slim, and even Madonna. Directors like The Daniels and Hiro Murai are great examples of directors that are really flexing their creativity in music videos. So what counts as a music video? Sol Artslitz in his book Money for Nothing describes them as short films intended to serve as an accompaniment to their musical soundtracks. In other words, music videos are short adverts that advertise songs, albums, and musicians and so the elements of the music video need to inspire people to either buy or listen to the song after they've watched it. For what makes a music video interesting, to me at least, is the way that it's able to control information. In a regular film, for example, like Seven by David Fincher, all the information is relevant to the plot. If the information is not relevant, it's not shown to the audience. Continuity is important in films for people to connect information together, believability so that the information that is given makes sense in the context of the film, but music videos don't abide by these rules. Instead, music videos choose to provide information, but don't follow up on that said information. Take it, for example, Express Yourself by Madonna, directed by David Fincher. The information we are told is that the video takes place in a city, there's some workers, a businessman and Madonna, but where is the city? Who is Madonna's character? Why is it just buff dudes working and what's happening here? Information is provided to us, but context is completely shattered. You can reorder a lot of these shots and the story wouldn't really change that much. Yet you still get an idea of a story. All of this is due to montage, something that Soviet filmmakers were experimenting with in 1920s with propaganda films. Yet, music videos still use this technique to this day to give the illusion of a story. One about a businessman running a factory and Madonna freeing them somehow. Bear in mind that music videos' purpose is to just sell music but top that with lyrics as well, and it's easy to see why it's so hard to follow, yet I still try to follow it. Carol Vernalis in her book Experiencing Music Videos discusses how music videos are unpredictable and at any point, the visuals, the music, and sometimes the lyrics can consume your attention. Andrew Goodwin in his book Dancing in the Distraction Factory makes the point that Music videos resemble music in a lot of ways. Combining these two insights, it's like when you listen to a song over and over again and then start to notice the subtle bass line or the melody in between the layers. Only except with music videos, you also have visuals that have their own layers of camera, lighting, and performance that need to be followed. Speaking of performance, music videos have a habit of making very memorable and iconic dance moves. To run a little experiment, all I need to do is show you this shot from Billie Jean uh, by Michael Jackson, directed by Steve Baron, and you immediately know the lyric, you immediately know the dance move, and you immediately know what the next shot is. 
Dance moves are infectiously memorable. The ability to put lyrics to what Carol Vanellis calls isolated gestures like dance moves, actions and camera moves makes music videos everlasting. Bullstraw argues, however, in the book Sound and Vision, the music video reader, that music videos is the diminishing of the interpretive liberty of the individual music listener. In other words, removing the listener's imagination when they listen to that particular song. For me, and I'm not sure if this is for everyone, when I listen to a song, I normally put visuals to it. However, when I immediately watch the music video, sometimes I get disappointed because it's not what I imagined. But music videos are adverts, so for people to be able to interpret them in different ways seems to be contradictory to what uh, certain artists, certain musicians, and their personas would like them to be. Taylor Swift is a great example of a musician that really uses music videos to build that persona of hers. She uses music videos to communicate to her fans. Joseph Kahn, a film director who's worked on many different music videos for Taylor Swift, has talked in an interview about what music videos are in the modern age of YouTube. Music videos now are kind of weaponized now. Their responses and their premeditated ideas of, of, uh, of what people are going to say about you. Um, it's a continuing dialogue in the world of tribal stan wars. And that's very fascinating to me. For example, the Taylor Swift music video, Look What You Made Me Do, directed by Joseph Kahn, is a great example of how meta this rabbit hole can really get as it references her own music and even previous incarnations of her own persona. Other musicians like Lady Gaga use this to communicate with a largely LGBTQT fan base like Born This Way, directed by Nick Knight. Kanye West's 30 minute music video, Runaway, directed by Kanye himself, accompanies the album My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy that explores his relationships with women, including his former partner, as well as the exploration of how people perceive him and how he perceives the world. Stormzy Shut Up is literally a response video to critics saying that he was only a backup dancer during a 2015 Brit performance with Kanye on stage. Music videos are a huge part of a musician's arsenal. Music videos are the most popular content on YouTube for various reasons, but hopefully I've inspired a lot of you to look at music videos in a different light. So please, watch some music videos, read about them, and go out and make your own.